I'm seeing that so much right now because there's so much uncertainty in a lot of people's lives because of everything going on that they have no idea how to keep hold of the big picture and that big vision because all the other stuff seems so endless right now. Welcome to the Positive Productivity Podcast, episode 666. The Positive Productivity Podcast was created to empower entrepreneurs to achieve and appreciate personal and professional success. I'm your host, Kim Sutton, and if you're ready, let's jump into today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of Positive Productivity. Holy moly, I am so excited about today's episode. Well, number one, because we're doing this video. So if you are listening on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio player, be sure to head on over to YouTube, subscribe to my channel. There will be a link in the show notes, which you can find at thekimsutton.com forward slash PP666. My friend Susan Desenzi <laughs> is brave enough to take on episode 666. It was a spur of the moment decision yesterday as a result of awesome conversations. And I just need to be a little bit transparent really fast. Number one, we are recording this and you know I don't usually like the timestamp. I think I have lipstick on my teeth, by the way, and that will be staying in. Um, we're recording this in July 2020. So in the midst of the pandemic, um, we'll keep this political and, you know, all that free, but we're, we're at home. My kids are at home. They're in the next room fighting over Roblox or Minecraft or whatever they're playing today. It's hot. Susan and I are both sweaty, you know, so bear with us when we have to take a drink or anything like that. But we were talking yesterday and the whole reason I brought that up and Susan, I don't normally go this long, but we connected. And that's so important in these times is to connect with your friends, your family, your fellow colleagues, your, your business besties, just reach out because the best way to get through these times is through the connection. And that's what I've really found. But Susan, I love having you here. Could you, well, yeah, you just introduce yourself because I just skipped over that whole part. <laughs> Oh, Kim, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to be here on Positive Productivity. You know, I uh, first of all, okay, I'm a licensed psychotherapist. Let's get that out of, out of the way, right? Because that's the titles and the labels and all that, you know, fun stuff. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I'm a spiritual and emotional resiliency coach. And I really work to help people through all of those things that hold them back. So just like now with everything going on in the world today, it's even more prevalent in people's lives that they're being held back because some things are totally out of their control. So I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I was so excited to jump in that I forgot to give the disclaimer that to our parental listeners, if you're listening with young kids and don't want them to learn any four letter cuss words, this is probably an episode that you should save till later. It's not going to be offensive hopefully to your ears, but I certainly don't want to teach any more keyword, any more kids four letter words. And I'm Sus sure Susan doesn't want I either. So I almost introduced, I was writing down Susan's uh, job title in Zoom chat. You know, everybody, positive productivity is not about perfection, but I wrote, uh, She's also the host of Kick Your Butts and the Spiritually Expressed Human, but I almost wrote the Spiritually Sexpressed Human, which was so Ooh. fitting because you used to be a sex therapist, but that's actually where we're not going today. Susan, I want to have you back for a second episode because I just want to jump into how we started talking yesterday. I asked Susan to help me with a challenge. We actually just got on to Zoom yesterday to to just catch each other up with what's been going on but I expressed and I know you the my listener may be feeling this that in this time we know what we have to do we know what we want to do we know what the big picture goal outcome looks like but for some reason it's so damn freaking hard to get off the effing couch and get our gears in motion like actually do the work and I've been experiencing that myself heads up to everybody that I'm speaking at the pod fest global summit next month on Pinterest for podcasters and I've been talking about this course for months so I said to Susan help me out with this 
And then we started talking and then I was like, can we take this to a podcast? But yeah, can you address that a little bit? Like why, or can you follow up on our conversation yesterday? Like what, a little bit about what we talked about? Oh, absolutely. You know, in this time, uh, procrastination and lack of motivation have always been issues for a lot of people, right? Even for myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I may do what I do for a living because it's my passion and I'm, I'm good at it. I'm still human. And so I still suffer from the negative thoughts in my head or a lack of motivation or, you know, wanting this thing out here, but really not understanding why I'm feeling like I can't, I, I can't, or I'm not getting there, you know? And so we were talking yesterday about this fact that you're struggling a little bit with some procrastination and lack of motivation when this course is such a passion for you. And I'm seeing that so much right now because there's so much uncertainty in a lot of people's lives because of everything going on that they have no idea how to keep hold of the big picture and that big vision because all the other stuff seems so endless right now, right? Like there's no real certainty. There's no quote unquote back to our old normal or an, even an understanding of the new normal. And, and so it, it became clear that part of it has to do with how we take the world in, right? And, and the experiences that we have when we're younger or growing up that kind of create these downloaded programs, so to, so to, so to speak, that are stuck and running constantly in the back of our mind. And so we can have this idea that we want to get this course done and we want to work on it that's a want, but then we get stuck in this program that's running that kind of stops us and there's this total disconnect and we don't know why. So then we start beating ourselves up and blaming ourselves. Which is exactly what was happening to me yesterday. I mean, to the point, I mean, you saw me yesterday. I wasn't showered. I looked like poop, no makeup. And I was feeling like I looked. I, got, I just got to be totally honest. Yeah. I mean, I felt like I had been beat to hell. And I think I was putting so much pressure on myself, but at the same time, I realized that there was a problem with my consistency and there was a problem with my actions. And in talking to you, I realized, okay, you know, this really was set up from childhood. There were so many promises made as a child that were never carried through. And my, my parents did amazing jobs as parents, but there were times that they promised things that didn't happen. So yeah. I, I started to get used to promises not happening and I, and I feel guilty about it. I need to le release that guilt. But even through my, my journey as a parent, I've promised my kids things and then not gone or it hasn't gone through. Yeah. I've, I've seen like bright, shiny lights and lots of money coming in when this pro project goes as the client says it's going to go and then it doesn't go so my family and I are thinking oh my gosh we're finally going to have lots of money but we just got screwed out of $25,000 or more you know yeah. so I I had that aha yesterday of am I doing this and just going to let myself down again but how am I going to know if I don't just do the damn work already kick my butts right right exactly well and that's the thing I mean we can't know the programs that are kind of downloaded. And I talk about it from like a, you know, kind of a computer perspective because so many people just kind of get that, right? They, they work on computers. They get that when you turn it on, you know, you have to type on the keyboard, right? You have to pull up the program and go to work in it, like, like a Word program or a, a, a PowerPoint program or a music program. It just doesn't do it all by itself. And, and, we don't realize that our brain and our mind hold things very differently. And so what happens is just like you said, you have these experiences as a kid where maybe your parents were amazing parents. And at the same time, they kind of weren't consistent and they disappointed you and your siblings maybe a lot because they said they would do X, Y, Z and they didn't. And so you learned that that was okay. And so that kind of program, promise it, and then sometimes it doesn't happen and no follow through happens, is kind of okay. Doesn't mean you agree with it. 
And so then it can kind of gets stored away in the mind, right? In the subconscious, and it continues to drive things forward. And we just go along and grow up as adults and we're like, why can't I do this? Why do I keep picking the same kind of person in a relationship? Why am I not consistent? Why do I procrastinate? You know, like you could plug anything in, right? And we keep doing it and we don't know why. And so all we have is like this present moment to like blame ourselves and say, well, it must be me. I'm doing something wrong. Or, you know, what's wrong with me that I can't figure this out or stop this? I really want this. And part of that has to deal, you know, is, is part of that as this human being, we have this nature and goal on this kind of mind consciousness side. And there's these two competing pieces, right, that happen that, that cause us to want or hope or wish for something, but then we kind of fear the loss of it. Like, I want to finish this program but what if I don't? Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, and I know a lot of listeners know, I'm a gamer. Well, I don't know if you knew that. You know that my husband's a video game designer. Yeah. But I'm a I'm a gamer, and I'm a very addictive personality. So our power went out a couple nights ago. Uh, there was a storm in our. Oh no, not our power. Our internet. Even worse. I would rather be without all power than without just the internet, right? Right, okay. So, so looking for ways to keep the family entertained, and I downloaded with my middle daughter um, a couple of games on my phone. And then over the, so this is three days ago, over the course of the next two days, including yesterday, I was glued to these games. It's like, why did you just spend 10 hours playing Merge Dragons don't download it, <laughs> listeners. Do not download it. I'm on level 158 already. You know, it's only wow. been three days. When you could have been, even without internet, I could have been recording courses. Right? It's an avoidance because if I don't really know how to deal with the other stuff I feel. So let me, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Okay. So what were some of the thoughts that you were having when you first went to download that game. And then after a while, a short while of playing it, you started to have the thought like, oh, I should try to do some work or I, any of the shoulds, any of the, I suppose to, I should, I better, like, do you remember any of those thoughts? Well, I felt guilty, but it's what I think I was feeling more was I just want to reach the next level. I just want to reach the next level. I just okay. want to reach the next level, but I want to take what I feel towards these stupid games. Okay. That was an insult. I realized, and I want to put the next level into my business, right. right. And into my personal life. Right. So I want to okay. take that, that feeling of winning out of the electronics and into my business and into my personal life, like losing even diet and exercise. When I lose another pound, that's taking it to the next level. Yeah. Okay. So let me, okay. So the, the, you're okay with a little like kind of coaching right now that's in the moment? That's why I wanted you to come on. I want people to hear how awesome you are because I'm, <laughs> I'm working through it right now. <laughs> Positive productivity does not mean perfection. I had to mute so I could burp. Yeah, I just muted so I could <laughs> cough because I didn't want it, not because I was worried about it being on, but because it'd be so flipping loud, man. Um, okay, so what did you think you were going to get when you were like, I just want to get the next level? What did you think you'd get? I didn't even think about it. Just the next level. Okay, well, think about it now. Oh, better dragons. Better dragons. Okay, so what would the better? <laughs> it's a game, true, but this is so relevant oh in our lives. So, so better, dra better dragons get me more land, which gets me more loot. Okay, so I get this more and more stuff, which increases my power in the game, right? Mm -hmm, right. Okay, so think about this just from this really simple perspective then. It's a game. You know it's not real. You're not a flipping dragon. And and getting more levels doesn't mean shit, right? Right. But now in life, you could be taking your business to the next level, but that's not pretend. That's real. Right. So what happens is there's a fear that kicks into place 
the game is fantasy. The game is fun. The game is some is ways you can distract and avoid because you can get the feeling that I'm more than, I'm worthy, I'm, I've reached this level, I'm enough, all these kinds of things. But because it's fantasy, it's easy. And it's easy to get caught up in because we want more of that, right? I want that. I want that feeling. Mm -hmm. But now you apply it to real life. And real life is like, oh, shit. If I get that next level in my life, then it means what? What would it mean for you if you reach that next level in your business? I think that's where the wind, the, the mixed feelings come in because what I would love to be doing is out speaking and inspiring and giving hope to entrepreneurs. But yeah. that means going out and speaking more which means missing more in my house. And I gave up, you and I have talked plenty. Like I gave up so much over the last four years because I was, I was so committed to the business. I mean, I was, for lack of a better way to put it, I was having an affair within a client, not a sexual affair, but because I was giving that client more time than I was giving my own family and my own husband. Like there was, there was just to make it clear. I just want to make this perfectly clear. There was no physical or emotional like can like love affair of any kind or yet yeah, nothing like that. But it was just the act of committing all that time to this person's work instead of giving, I mean, I was skipping out on soccer games, like not walking my kids to school, not reading them books, not even sitting at the table for dinner. So the thought of going back to a place where I'm not here, like I am now, is a little bit scary because I don't want to see myself slip back into that pattern of not being here. I mean, it nearly cost me my marriage. Like we were talking about divorce 10 months ago. Right. So see, you. what I hear you saying is that you'd be afraid that if you reach that next level, that you could risk, lose, a fear of loss. Mm-hmm. So, so can I take just a minute to like super, super quickly, I go into a whole lot more depth and, and how to really implement and stuff. But just as a real basic kind of understanding, can I take just a minute or two to kind of explain this thing of how we take the world in? Yeah, please. Okay, because this will make so much sense with what you just said then, you know, especially for, for you listening out there. Okay, so our, let's just talk for a second about the two sides of us as a human being, okay? And we're not even going to go to the spiritual place. I mean, I have a podcast called The Spiritually Expressed Human that's launching in a couple weeks. Um, My second one, whoop, whoop. And it's about kind of that full embodiment. But I don't want to go to that place yet because that's not relevant until you get the basics down. Our brain is like a computer. It's like a hard drive. It's a storage unit. And it only has a nature and a goal that are the same, and that's caring about the survival of the body. It will do whatever it takes to make sure that your physical form, your body is in survival mode 100% of the time. Your brain doesn't care if you love or, or lost or felt rejected or got hurt or lost a job. Your brain doesn't even think like that, right? There's no thoughts. It just runs the system. So it's like a huge operating system. But then we have this mind side. You can call it whatever you want. Let's call it like mind and consciousness. There we have a nature and a goal too on the human side. And our nature, and all you have to do is look at your beautiful babies and recall when they were babies and see this then and still, hopefully now, well, maybe not so much as they hit teenagehood. And that's that our nature is to love and be loved. That's our nature. Now, our goal is feedback, some form of feedback like acknowledgement, approval, acceptance, awareness, validation. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right. So now there's these two pieces. Here's the problem. And this is what you were just talking about and why this is happening. There are these two pieces that are in competition with each other 100% of the time for that feedback. And that's a hope for gain and a fear of loss. Now, I'm not talking fear like, oh my gosh, I'm terrified somebody's following me. I'm talking about like what you just said. I want to go out and speak more. I want to have this next level in my business, but I'm afraid that if I do that, then I may go back to a place where my marriage is at risk, a potential loss, you fear that loss, 
or you just fear that you don't want the problems, right? You don't want to have an argument with your husband. You don't want to miss out on your children's lives. So there's this competing stuff that's happening. You hope for this. You want this. You wish this. And at the same time, there's that fear of what's going to happen if. And we see it a lot in like dating relationships in the beginning. Oh my God, he's so hot. I hope he thinks that I'm, I'm dressed okay and he likes me. That's a fear of loss. I called her and she said she'd be home and she wasn't there. And then we get off and we, we leave our message and then we're like, well, maybe she wasn't into me. A fear of loss. So these fears don't have to be these big, huge things, right? It's really, really simple. But all these little downloaded programs that are running in our brain and our mind is like the sentry and the guard to all the incoming stuff that's happening and making decisions about what it means just kind of stores it away in the brain's little file folder system. And so anytime then you're playing the game and you're getting to the next level, it's like, feels good. I've got to the mm -hmm. next level. I'm better. Like I'm worthy and I'm lovable and I'm valuable. And I don't mean specifically in the game, but you know what I mean? It gives you a little sense of that. Like I'm powerful. I got to the next level. I've got more. Right. right. But um, then real life kicks in and it starts to kick your ass with that fear. Does so that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And you got me. You're like putting together all these pieces that I didn't realize were disconnected for, for five years. Because wow. now I'm thinking about my first coach who's a great friend Fred West previous guest I'll put the link in the show notes he asked me during one of our first calls he says Kim what's your zero because we were talking about financial wellness I was like what do you mean he's like well what what dollar amount are you do you feel comfortable having in your bank account it's like well as long as it's not red I'm okay <laughs> yeah, all right. right right so he's like uh we got to work on that and i was like what he's like we gotta raise your zero like i don't want you to be happy just being at zero like i want you to raise your zero to ten dollars or to 20 or to 50 or to five thousand. but start raising your zero and when you get under that point then you start to feel uncomfortable but your goal is not to get under that point in full disclosure my zero is no longer zero Oh, that's awesome. It's, I'm below my zero right now, but I'm not in the red. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but, but it's no longer zero. I mean, if my right. zero was still zero, I would be in the red, you know, and right, it's good true. to raise it because yeah. then you see what you've got to do. But where, where I'm going at that is, I mean, so it's funny that we're talking about next level. I have my next level tracking spreadsheet. I've got it right here next to me. And my week starts on Thursday, just because that's when I started it. But when I was printing out my new sheets yesterday, I put on the bottom line after talking to you that I need to have all-star consistency and focus. Like that's a new line. The whole point of the no next level you weekly spreadsheet is that I give myself experience points. Like in video games? Yes. Nice. I give myself experience points for track, for doing certain actions. And my goal has been, since I started this last fall, to get to a 250-point week. I have yet to do it. I want this sheet right here to be a 250-point week. Okay. So what would you give yourself when you hit 250 points? Well, I wanted to actually talk to you about that because... So I don't know if you know her, but I had Lauren Zander on my show last year. She would actually be really good for your show. I'll make sure to introduce you. Okay. And then awesome. I was also talking to Debbie Adea, one of our mutual acquaintances. Love, 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 Debbie. Yeah. So Lauren Zander was on the show talking about personal integrity and keeping promises to yourself. And she actually uses a consequence solution. Like when she does something that she shouldn't be doing, or if she doesn't do something that she should, there's a consequence. For example, she shared that she has a commitment to have sex with her husband six days a week or something like that. I would Damn. be exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Awesome, and, though. <laughs> and if she doesn't, I think what she said was that if she didn't do it, then she could not watch the most recent episode of whatever show she's watching at that moment and uh -huh. when we recorded this the game of thrones was still on and i was like oh my gosh if i had to miss the latest episode and you can never she she can never go back and watch it if she misses it she misses it uh -huh. I was like, oh my gosh 
there's no way in hell I can tell myself I'm going to, you know, have that type of consequence for six days a week of sex in my house. That's just not going to happen and I'll never watch TV again. Um, but then Debbie and I were talking because I was going to do a consequence for myself. And she's like, well, I'm, I'm, I work off of rewards more. Yeah. So have you seen anything in your work which works better or is it all dependent upon the person? Honestly, as you were saying that, there was that part of me that was cringing because, because I'm a licensed therapist, I have been blessed. And, and, so, and unfortunately, in some ways, I say unfortunately because it means people are in pain. I would love to see my field be non-existent and people not need therapists and, and coaches who can be that listening ear and really help move them through those blocks. I would love for all of us as humans to be able to just kind of self-administer and self-do this. But the truth is, is that, look, even I get stuck in my own head. And no matter what I teach, experience, learn, grow, witness, ex whatever, we're human and we're going to get caught up in stuff and layers of things are going are gonna to come up. And so, you know, I have seen more often that people self-blame them when they kind of come at it from a consequential kind of place, right? If I give myself this consequence and I don't meet that then, or I don't want to follow through with the consequence, then I feel even worse because I already feel bad about myself. So I think it's kind of twofold. I like Debbie work more off reward because it's, it's more when I'm struggling with something, I want to uplift myself. I already freaking feel bad about something. I don't need to feel worse by then having another check mark box in, in the column that says something else you didn't do, dumbass, right? And, and I know that I might feel that way. So I kind of, uh, I totally agree with Debbie and was kind of cringing when you said that. But, and here's my but, is that I think it depends upon the person. And like for Laura, because she's that kind of person who works better, she's honoring herself. And so I think there is no clear cut answer. I would say for the majority, it's more reward based though, because you have to get to the to the root of kind of that downloaded program, so to speak, that's running like you watching your parents consistently not following through. Mm -hmm. So it became easy for you to then not follow through. And as you started feeling the negative consequences of it, then you were like, oh, shit, I don't like this. Why is this happening? And you started questioning it. So now you, first step is you got to be aware. Right. So I think you have to be aware of the kind of person you are first. Also, I think it's better to go more reward to say, I hit my 250 point week this week. Mm -hmm. And so what can I do that would be really kind of unique and special for myself that would be a nice reward for me that I would feel really good about and not just like going through the motions when I hit that 250 and make it something really meaningful for you. I think I'm going to set that right now. I either want to go get a massage or go to the chiropractor. Oh, nice. One or the well, other self-care rewards. Is the chiropractor a self-care because it's kind of needed? Whereas the massage is really, truly a treat. Oh, both of them would be amazing rewards. Like, no, I don't need to go to the chiropractor, but the way it just relaxes me and goes, Oh, nice. Like, yeah. I, have, I haven't gotten a massage besides the ones that my family gives me in like a decade. Oh, actually, nice. <laughs> actually, I can put a date on it. 17 years. It was within the month after my 17-year-old was born. That's the last time I've had like a real massage. Wow. So maybe that one. Okay, I'm going to go for the massage. The massage. Okay. Yep. So what, what will it mean to you then? And these are all important questions to ask yourself, right? Like we really have to understand the meanings that we give things. So like, what would it mean to you about you, Kim, as a person, if you hit your 250 points? I'm resilient and I can do whatever I set my mind to. Uh, Is that what, what you're what, asking? Yeah. And, and are there any other thoughts you'd have about yourself if you, if you meet that 250? 
Damn, keep going, girl. Let's do it again. Okay, so you would see yourself more re- as a more resilient person, and you would see yourself as someone who's consistent. What will happen, and what do you think will, you'll think about yourself if you don't meet the 250? Try again next week. You know me. I'm not one to give up. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, for sure. But are there other thoughts that you'd be saying in your head about the fact that you didn't make the 250? Yeah, because I just counted my score from this past week and it was 188 and I told myself, damn, if you would have just. Ah, there you go. Yeah. If you would have just. If you would have just. If you would have just. That's the same as you should have. You're supposed to. You ought to. And, and that's the other thing is that we have all these expectations about ourselves and kind of the world and the people around us that we kind of learn to from maybe childhood or upbringing or just our earlier years. It could be a year ago. It doesn't have to mean not everything is like flipping childhood. I get a lot, you know, because I'm a therapist, people are like, oh, you're going to analyze me? And it's like, no, I don't analyze. They're like, you're going to have me lay down on the couch and tell you my whole life story and blame everything on mom and dad. I'm like, no. And no offense if that voice sounds like anybody out there. I wasn't mirroring anybody. But the truth is, like, <laughs> Which makes me is... think that you totally were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's like, it's not lay on the couch and tell me your whole life story and blame everything on mom and dad. But Jesus, man, we're, we're some of everything that we've experienced up to this point. So how can we dismiss the experiences that we've had in childhood and you know, with young adult years and our earlier years of, of being an adult and not recognize that those experiences and some of the stuff we learned had impact on us and kind of created some of the programs that are downloaded and kind of operating from a sometimes conscious, most of the time subconscious level. And then we wonder why. And then we have the shoulds and the I would haves and the I should haves and why didn't I's and is that ever going to make anybody feel really good about themselves? Like, I deserve that massage when I hit 250? Not mm-hmm. if I'm focusing on, oh, I only got 188. I would have, if I would have only just done this, then I could have. I was seriously like, you should have just ridden the bike and taken a shower after you talked to Susan yesterday, and that would have been another four freaking points. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't yesterday? No, I never went live. Okay, so I want to address that. So actually, besides the 250 points, Debbie and I have a good, better, best chart. So in five different areas, four different areas, wealthy, spiritual, biz, bodies. That's what it is. W, W, S, B, Bs is what we, we work off of. Cool. And we have good goals, better goals, and best goals for each day. Nice. And I've told myself, so I have... I told myself if I hit all my goods in a certain week, then I have twenty dollars to invest somewhere in the business. If I hit all my all my betters in a week, then it's fifty. If it's best, then it's hundred or something like that. I've yet to do that. So that's my goal for this upcoming week because I totally botched it yesterday. This week doesn't count, but let's let's forward think. And then I also have because I my YouTube channel is out and going now, and then I have Kim Bits. For, for listeners, you may not know that I've actually taken all the solo episodes that I used to have. I'm now doing solo quote episodes, although it's video, on YouTube every, every morning, Monday through Friday. And I've told myself that if I can stick to this, have my Monday, Wednesday, Friday Facebook lives, have my daily YouTube lives, and get my podcast out and properly marketed every week, not to scare you, Susan, but that's been a consistency issue with me. Okay. Then if I can stick to it for the month of August, then I'm getting myself teeth whitener. I know that's like, and I just mean like the $50 box from Amazon. I'm not talking about a $1,500 dental treatment. Right. If I can stick through with it through the end of September, then I'm getting a new microphone, something that doesn't need to be up in my face. And if I can stick to it through the end of October, then another mutual connection, Richie Ote, has a recommendation for an awesome digital camera, a Canon, like nice 
Canon. It's a $700 camera. Cool. It's going to freak my husband out when I get there. But I know that consistency is the biggest thing holding me and my company and me personally back. I mean, if I had been consistent with riding my bike and eating good, then I wouldn't be at this weight. If I had been consistently getting out there and being visible and sharing what I do, then my business may not be as small as it is. So it's that consistency and those, yeah, I had already thought about the rewards. I mean, I got to say, there's a part of me that's scared about spending $700 on a camera, right? but I'm right. so excited. I right. mean, $700 on a camera that my kid's probably going to drop and break. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, my friend. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Positive Productivity Podcast. I wanted to take a quick moment to invite you to join the Work Smarter, Not Harder Challenge. Over the course of 30 days, these free, yes, free. Short videos will teach you a few of the systems and strategies I set up in my business so I can get away from my computer and back to the people I love. I invite you to sign up now at worksmarternotharderchallenge.com. Again, you can sign up at worksmarternotharderchallenge.com. Now, I want to point out, though, listen to what you said. But if I had been consistent if i had so that kind of downloaded program is still running that is still kind of blaming yourself so how do i kick the butts well you know that's the thing you have to first be aware first of all of what you're even saying to yourself because we can't really get to the core root of kind of the issue for anybody the kind of like the core wound or the root or the core downloaded program or whatever we want to call it for anybody, right? Everybody can have different language about it. Um, You can't really get to that place unless you're aware of some of the stuff you're thinking and feeling. So it's like, again, one of the best questions to ask is what does it mean to you? What will it mean if I'm more successful in my business? Can I shift that if to when? Yeah. What no, will, I mean when. when. Yeah. Okay, so what does it mean to you when you're more successful in your business? What does Kim look like? What does Kim's home life look like? What does Kim's financial life look like? What does her business look like? All these pieces are important. So, like, what does it mean for you? Um, I have time during my day to go get my eyebrows waxed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, true. But more seriously, like, what does it no, mean? No, but seriously, about like, um, that I'm hearing like a Abraham Hicks song in my head. It's, I guess they play it at their seminars. I've never been, but it's, you can do it. You can do it. And I, like, I, I can hear that. And that's probably what would be playing for me is, you did it. You did it. You know, like, hooray. Okay. Like, now go a step further, but you've done it. That's awesome. But what does it mean about Kim? If Kim's business is at a higher level, don't we go back to some of that place of some of the butts that come in that say, but I'm afraid that it'll take me away from my family. I'm afraid. See, I'm that afraid. It'll- See, I have that. Is it a dichotomy where I'm like, I'm afraid of that, of taking it away from the family. But like, I'm looking at this back wall that won't be there when that happens because my master suite's going to be there with my own bathroom right right but see it comes at a cost it does come at a cost so how do i kick that cost out of my brain how do i reprogram really it boils down to a worth issue it boils down to a deserving issue that says i am worthy and deserving of having these amazing things and this master suite and making a crap ton of money and at the same time i am i have deservingness and worth to have an amazing marriage and amazing communication and none of it is going to get like it's not one at the cost of the other that's the hope for gain and the fear of loss competing Mm -hmm. pieces that keep kicking in and so one of the ways to begin to really understand what that is because we can't do anything about what we don't know right like you know, I always, I always look at it like the, the body has this amazing pain warning system that tells us problem, right? Like 
I always use the appendicitis issue. Take like a 300 pound tough guy who's having an appendicitis and he's got 102 fever, he's shaking, he's sweating. And now he's down on the ground and he's like, oh, it's, it's just something I ate or a little gas, I'm fine. And like his appendix is getting ready to burst and he's not doing anything about it. Now, most of us aren't like that. And most of us on the other side aren't what like the people call hypochondriacs where every little pain is like, oh my God, I'm dying. Most of us are in the middle where we're like, oh, wow, I must have ate something bad or I have some gas or just, you know, it's fine. And we ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And then eventually the body's warning system says, knock, knock, dumbass. There's a problem here. You really need to pay attention. And at some point we finally go, wow, this is not something I ate. Or if you're a woman, feminine stuff or fatigue, this is a, maybe a problem and we take care of it with emotions and the mental stuff, we don't do that. And, and yet it's warning signals the same way. So you keep having some of the same thoughts like, why am I playing this game versus kind of being more productive in my business right now? Well, I don't know. Let's look at it and pick it apart a little and see what the quote unquote pain is that's preventing you. So we have to be aware and start asking those questions. Then we can start getting to the root, which, like you and I talked about yesterday, part of it was that you had seen that disappointment and inconsistency is okay. So now you have to make a decision. Is it okay? But that's, that's interesting that you say that because it was never okay. Like, it was never okay. Like, I was let down bad. And, and I let down my kids bad, too. Like, and I just need to put it out there. I mean, I, I promised them allowance if they did their chores. And for years, they didn't get allowance because there was no money to pay allowance. So right. at some point, they just didn't want to do it anymore because, you know, mom hadn't kept true to her word. But see, it was okay on some level because if it wasn't, Kim, you wouldn't have repeated it. So that's what I'm saying from a subconscious level. Your younger self learned it was ultimately what was going to happen so it's mm -hmm. okay it has to be okay because otherwise it's going to create too much pain and problem for us so we may know that it's not okay we may not want it to be okay but there's a younger part of us the 20 year old us or the five-year-old us or whatever that says yeah but this is just the way it is and this is the way it's probably going to be because this is the way it always was up to this point so i and just so need to break that cycle and so you have to look at what are you afraid of in breaking the cycle? Again, are you more afraid that if you're successful to the level that you want to be at, that it will mean some kind of change or loss that's possible in your home life? Hmm. And, and that means like, well, I don't want to miss my children's soccer games and all their activities. So, okay, how do I set the boundaries then? When I reach that level where I may be in more demand, how do I set those boundaries then to really not miss my children's lives and, and have my relationship with my husband change and at the same time keep the, the business level at that level and continuing to grow too? And that requires boundaries. But to, to set boundaries, we have to love ourselves in a way that's, that is a really true deep sense of worth and value and deservingness that allows us to stick to that boundary no matter what. That's how you can be consistent and stop mm. procrastinating and stay motivated. Holy crap. You got me thinking about, I saw a post by Jenna Kutcher last year where she was talking about she was invited to go speak in Vegas or something. This is before pandemic. <clears throat> but she, she had her baby, you know, so she and her husband are spending all their time with the, with the baby. And she didn't want to spend that much time alone or you know away from the baby she yeah. wanted had to go on a you know a commercial airliner spend all that time in the airport and all that so she turned down the highly lucrative speaking gig okay and and with that reason and then they came back and they said well what if we get you a private jet to fly you and you can go you can fly down and go back home the same day on, on the private jet wow i'm putting it together now I just and did she take the gig done? She did. See, she had she had <laughs> photos of herself, and she, I might, 
I think she went by herself, but she may have actually even taken her husband and her baby. But I might, I it might have just been her. I don't remember. A yeah. year is a long time in the in the memory of Kim when it's not you know pertinent to me. Right. But yeah, thank you. I mean, how simple would it be to just say that? No, I really I can't be away from my family for that long. But I can, if you pay for me to go down and come back same day and it's not in the middle seat on an airplane that's that's good yeah (laughs) i'm not doing middle seats anymore that's the thing oh i never did i couldn't stand it i'm a bigger girl so like for me the the middle seat was like no i'm not going to be squished on both sides i always loved the window so i could like squish into the well of the window a little bit yeah so that if like dude in the middle is just like Oh, I own the whole entire row. I can somehow get some relief. I had that happen on a flight to London once for seven hours. I was literally squished. You can't see me, but my arms all like wrapped up into my body over like on my left side, squished like that for seven hours because dude in the middle thought he owned the entire plane. Well, the the armrests do belong to the person in the middle. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Right. We're the people on the window in the aisle. Remember that. I had this. I was the last time I was in the middle, and this is the last time I'll ever be in the middle. The woman on the aisle just was on her keyboard and like kept oh. on elbowing me typing, and I'm like, "Do you mind?" I didn't say <laughs> it, but I mean, next time I probably would. Yeah. Well, I want to be conscious of your time and and uh, respectful, but I want you back so we can talk more about you and what you do. But where can listeners go in the meantime to learn more about you, connect, get all your great stuff, and to subscribe to your podcast, your new podcast when it comes out? Well, uh, there's no tab for the new podcast yet um, on my website, but there will be something soon. Uh, They can go to uh, www.susandesenzi.com. And I know that's kind of hard to spell. It's S U S A N D A S. C E N Z I. Oh, I get Deshenzies and Desenskis and all kinds of weird letters in the name. So you should buy them all and point them all to your site. I but if you, listeners, yeah. if you if you're driving, if you're trying not to burn dinner, if you're on the elliptical, go to the Kim Sutton.com forward slash PP six six six. That should be easy to remember, mm-hmm. right? PP666. Yeah. Yeah. And all of Susan's links will be right there, but susandesenzi.com. Yeah. And there they can grab um, my, uh, I have a guide to emotional resiliency called Secret to Loving Yourself, because it's really about beginning to pay attention and giving yourself that kind of self love. And I don't mean through self care, that's super important too, but it's getting a little deeper, kind of at your own pace in understanding where some of the things are that are holding you back are kind of being, um, I wouldn't say housed, but are kind of like being stored, you know? And as you go through the exercises in the guide, you can really walk away from that with a stronger sense of you and then begin to implement, right? Because some of this stuff, Kim, like this is not easy stuff, but it is so simple. You know what I mean? It just takes a different level of practice. Oh my gosh. Learning to say no took me 40 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, even to my husband, no, sweetie, waking me up at five o'clock in the morning to have sex is not okay. If you want it, you ask for it before 10 o'clock. But it took me it took me eight years of mar- or of being together to learn how to say no to him. Sure. This does yeah. not work for me. Like why yeah. why does it take us so long to tell other people? I mean, telling my kids what does not work for me. Telling clients. Telling Susan, fun. talking more than ten minutes sometimes. No, I've got ten minutes. <laughs> totally. I get that. I do that too. Look, it's because we're human and we don't wanna, you know, sometimes we don't want to hurt people's feelings, but it's that hope for gain, fear of loss thing. I don't want to look like a shithead. I don't want to look like a B, you know, B-A-T-C-H. Yeah. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to say no because I don't want my kids to hate me. Like, God, there's so many reasons. And it always has to do with us mm-hmm. and what we're afraid will happen or how they'll see us or how we'll see ourselves or some situation if and that's another if if this then that 
Yeah. When this, then that. No, there's no if, then, and when, then. It's just like right now. Right. Yeah. Well, listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment on your preferred listening platform or, or below the show notes at thecontentin.com forward slash PP666. I would love to hear what big ahas you had. I'm sure Susan would love to hear them as well. And make sure to go over to your podcast listening platform, uh, subscribe to Kick Your Butts, and when it comes out, the spiritually expressed, not sex expressed, but expressed <laughs> human. If you're watching on YouTube, please like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel so that you find out when more episodes go live. But Susan, I have loved every second of this. You're going to come back again because you don't have a choice. I say so. But would you mind leaving the listeners with a, a parting piece of advice, golden nugget? Absolutely. It's been such an honor. Thank you so much, Kim, for having me on. And I will come back anytime and I will have you on my show. This is it's just incredible. Final piece of advice. You only have one shot in this body, regardless of whatever your beliefs are or aren't. You have one shot in this body as the person that you are. You have the ability to choose how you show up and who that is every single minute of every single day. If you're finding that you're not showing up the way you want, something in your gut or your heart is saying, this isn't quite me or this isn't quite right or I wish I could do this differently. Please reach out to those who can be a mirror for you. It doesn't have to be this long drawn out thing for years. It can be as simple as a session or two. And I would love to offer your audience, Kim, a 30-minute complimentary session, which they can find in the show notes, the link for that, because sometimes we just need a little implementation. You're more than you realize. You're more than you know. You are a brilliant shining diamond. Let yourself shine. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Positive Productivity Podcast. When I'm not podcasting, I'm supporting six to seven figure business coaches with their marketing automation and entrepreneurs like you through my coaching and mastermind programs. I want to invite you to visit thekimsutton.com to learn how I can help you take your business to the next level. 